Welcome back. If you just joined us, uh, we're doing a review of uh, the Edo State gubernatorial election that just ended, and of course, which was won by uh, the APC's uh, Monde Okwebolo. Uh, now, gentlemen, I, I still have with me in the studio uh, Libro Soshuma, who's a lawyer and political analyst. Also with me is uh, Nelson Ekujimi, another political affairs analyst and election observer at this election and Richard Adeinka, who is uh, the data person. Richard, let, let me start with you. Right. Um, help us to understand, you know, uh, you know some of these results now, uh, the, the results from that election. How really would you say the results explain the, the victory of the APC? Oh, wow. Uh, APC, uh, the trend, the election trend mm. has shown mm. us that there are strongholds, some local government that APC never lost since 2012. Okay. And although there are local government mm. that were with Governor Shomole in yeah. 2012, mm. stayed with him in 2016, and when Governor Baseki went to PDP, they went with the Governor Baseki. And, and I have that, I, I can see yes, that slide. Yes, but now. So, when mm. the, now this election, many of them, some of them, you know, they left him and they went back to APC. Okay, so, so, so you can make reference to the slide. Now, let's, yeah. let's try to understand. Yes, Ego, for instance, was in PDP with Governor Baseki. Ego went back to APC. And then Esson Central... Sorry, was with, PD, was with... Was with PDP in 2020. Okay, and 2020. now he went back to APC, mm. leaving Governor Baseki mm. behind. You have Esson Central, was in PDP 2016, mm. 2020, but now he returned to... Uh, APC, yeah. but SN Northeast, SN Southeast, and SN West. SN West went to APC, but SN North Cent Northeast and Southeast remain with PDP. Mm. So those three local governments, they were with Governor Baseki in 2020, but now they returned to, they left him and they returned to APC. APC. Perhaps as a result of many factors, mm. especially performance. And then you have. Uh, Oriyama also was with PDP in 2016, in 2020, mm. but now he returned to APC. And then you have Owan West has never lost. Owan East has never lost to PDP. He remained with APC. And then uh, Owan West was with PDP, with Obaseki, and then now he returned to APC. Uh, Owan was the only one that remained with PDP, PDP in 2020, and now it remains. So, few local governments. In Hall, APC won 11, 11. of the local government, mm -hmm. then PDP, 7. So, those four critical local governments that were with Governor Baseki. In 2020, they left him right now, and they went to APC. So, he has to look at himself with his performance. Oh, 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 okay, yeah, Libros, uh, uh, you, you can see the, the slide that uh, Richard, uh, th there you have the slide. Uh, Libros and Nelson, you, you want to speak to this slide? Uh, just before we go back to uh, Edo Central, I mean Edo South now and how the election shaped out there. Well, uh, I think uh, one thing that stands out clearly is that, uh, like we used to say, that no two situations are the same. The same. Uh, factors that could have... Uh, swung the pendulum against the traditional way the parties, uh, the, some of the local government voted, mm. you know, uh, is based on the current uh, social political realities. Mm -hmm. For example, you take a place like um, Oonde. 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 Well, you have the PDP uh, winning in 2020 as well as in 2024. It shows you clearly that uh, those factors that might have influenced other local governments, you know, to have changed. The ACN won it in 2012. The ACN won, won it in 2020. 2016. They won it in 2016. But in 2020, when Obaseki so changed camp to, to, to PDP, PDP, they were with him. And in 2024, even when they, stayed with, they yeah, still remained with, with him. him. Then you take a place like um, Ovia North East. Also, the, I think the same situation uh, uh, obtains there. Where ACN won in 2012, APC in 2016, PDP in 2020, and... Uh, PDP in 2024. Yeah. But looking at Orion, you see the, that here we had the PDP winning in 2016 16? and PDP winning in 2020. But now it's uh, APC has taken the baton. Uh, APC won there. Uh, if you look at it generally, 
like we said earlier on, for those local governments where we have the uh, the party strongholds, like people like uh, former Governor Adam Soshoma, now Senator, uh, you look at a place like um, uh, Esako, for example. Ex Esako, if you look at Esako, it has been the same pattern since 2012. Yeah. You look at a place like uh, Esako uh, East, East, the same thing happens. Esako West, same thing. Esako Central. So they've been consistent. So, you know, in, in politics, that's exactly what Liberal said. Yes, mm. absolutely. So, uh, uh, quickly, if you look at in that 2012 election mm. that Oshomole went into with uh, General, retired General Charles Ahiawe, yeah. Oshomole was going for a second term. Yeah. And Oshomole had performed. Yes. And that's so, true. traditionally, everybody in Benin felt, look, People this man deserved a second, second term, term yeah. and he has performed. Yeah. So, all the local government went massively for Oshomole. In 2016, the part the house was divided against itself. Everybody that came together said, look, Oshomole should go. In 2016, did not agree with the successor that Oshomole chose, which was uh, Obaseki. And then, mind you, you remember you have um, uh, Zeyamu, Pastor Osage Zeyamu, yes. you know, for the PDP ballot. Yes. And so they shared vote. Os Osage Zeyamu was once with them also. Yeah. And so they, they separated. So they shared the vote across their stronghold. With PDP, uh, APC being the ruling party at that time, still maintaining the lead. Mm. But in 2020, you know the swap, Osage now came to APC, APC, APC. when Obaseki went, went to PDP. PDP. And because of the crisis, and the fact that people were talking about, oh, no, no to Godfatherism, no good to Godfatherism, areas that were traditionally uh, APC, APC areas, places like uh, Igwebe, uh, places like Kubaoka, places like Oredo, they all went to PDP. Places like Ovia North, places like Ovia South, where you had Igbinidios, they moved to PDP. Places like um, Owa West, Owa East, all of them, because PDP was a city, uh, Obaseki was a sitting governor, and then you had the slogan, no to Godfatherism. Mm -hmm. And that also another thing that worked against the APC then was everything that Oshomole used to criticize the uh, 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 Sage's candidacy in 2016, yes. he now had to recant. recant. So, but in 2024, like you can see, now no governor is on the ballot. Yes. The sitting governor, what he condemned in 2020, he's now trying to replicate the same godfatherism. Yeah. And then the people that worked with him in 2016 and in 2020, all of them now, he had pushed away. So they, you have a united front, even of, of strange bedfellows, mm. though they don't like, they might not like themselves, but they had a common enemy. The enemy of my enemy is my <laughs> friend. Yeah. So they had a common enemy in Obaseki, who they felt was an extension. Uh, and that's why the candidature was an extension of Obaseki. Mm. So that's why you now had everybody going back to their traditional domain to struggle. You see Oriomo, where, um, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, the uh, uh, PDP candidate, he's from there. The former PDP candidate mm. for the 2020 election, mm. Pastor Sage Zeyamu, yeah. was from there, but he was defeated in that election. That election yeah. But yes. in this election, they had to follow him because the promises made to them by Oshum El Obaseki Obaseki. were unfulfilled. Yeah. You look at um, places like, like we talked about the ESA Central, ESA North, before. These were tra PDP traditional domain. Mm. Yeah. But when you don't have a candidate in the election, you naturally want to vote for that candidate. So mm. I think these are some of the factors that basically played out in, in, in all of this. How, how, uh, Richard, how much of, a, uh, how much of the non-performance, if you like, of God, uh, Governor Godwin Obaseki, how much of that uh, w would you say resulted in the defeat of his party? Because, uh, you, you know, whether we like it or not, the consensus in Edo State is that the governor did not perform, perform. to expectation. Yes. Yeah, I usually, it, not only on the outcome, on the results, mm. but also on voter turnout. Mm. Performance generally affects voter turnout, mostly. If you look at the voter turnout, there is about 25%. And in 2020, it shortly, just uh, some, some percent from 25% uh, to. So in a situation whereby you have 75% of the registered voters Staying away completely from election, that tells you something. At least the, pre the, 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 the governor, if he had performed, that should have motivated neutrals, neutral uh, voters 
to come and participate in the election. But you see that first it pushed them away. Now, it also affected how they voted for him. Ordinarily, some, uh, the PDP kept faith with him. But when he left APC, APC to PDP, and they followed him. So they were expecting some a level of performance that we reassure them that, okay, we didn't make me say following you the first time, so let us remain with you. So as a result of his non-performance, they had to switch. Yes, there are, for instance, in the PDP will never win the circle anyway. So that's a strong good. What he should have done with his performance is if you are not going to take from other... At, at either, you got retain the ones that you have with your performance so that during campaign, you can have something to say that I did this, I did this, I did this, I did this. As a result, my candidate that I'm selling to you now will even do more than I've done. So that will even make him to penetrate other local government. But in this case, as a result of non-performance, he could not even retain his stronghold. And this is where we are. Nelson, you, you look at Edo North, and there you have it. I mean, uh, I mean uh, Edo South. South, I should say. Um, uh, uh, you know, that's where you have the majority of the voters. And the governor himself is, is from that um, senatorial district. A lot of people had expected that the governor was going to do everything to ensure that he won that senatorial district. In fact, not only the governor failed even to win his own local government area, which is a redo, a redo yeah. local yeah. government yeah. area. And eventually, even though they were able to win the senatorial district, the margin wasn't wide at all. The APC did fantastically well in this um, in this senatorial district, uh, and some people will tell you that because of the fantastic performance. In, uh, of the APC in this senatorial district, they eventually won the election. Do you think, you look at, you know, this is where we have Benin City, the state capital, for instance. Mm -hmm. Do you think if Governor Obaseki had done very well in office, if he had performed very well in terms of development, um, do you think that in spite of the opposition against him, that he probably, his party probably would have won? Well, uh, I think one thing we must get clear, like we always say, every politics is local. And uh, one fact you cannot run away from is that there are some sentiments, and no matter your performance, that you know pervades the political atmosphere in our local in our localities. The performance is also very important. The, the performance is also very important, but there are some sentiments. If you go against those sentiments, no matter your performance, some people don't want to know. Uh, you, the reason w that uh, why the APC gave the PDP a run for its money here, yeah. like uh, Libros rightly said, uh, I observed that. In those, in the two senatorial zones of the south and the central, the, it was like the APC gave the PDP a man-to-man -man marking. That look, we must ensure that whatever we are losing grounds here should be very, very minimal. But in Edo South, they went for the kill, and they got that. Uh, you, you, are, you talk about uh, an election in which the governor was reported to have declared it uh, a do or die yeah. affair. You also recognize that uh, on election day, as, a, as an observer, we saw people come to the polling unit who say, I, I came alone in order to come and see whether it's safe to come and vote. Mm. Some persons are told, waiting for me to pass the information that, okay, well, nobody is cutting off anybody's head. You can now come. Then it also on that day, it rained in uh, those states. And uh, uh, like we say in our local parlance, you know, uh, some people that don't want, even want to come out and vote. They will use rain. <laughs> rain will be, will be a vibe <laughs> <laughs> And you know, uh, some people have health challenges that they cannot come into the So all this, uh, you know, uh, must have affected the, the tunnel. But for Oredo, where I purposely stayed much of the day, I saw that it was a straight fight. Hmm. They matched one another to ensure uh, because Oredo was uh, one local government that had a very huge population. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in fact, even in 2020, it was like the decider. Yeah. Because we all knew that whoever wins Oredo with the population is as good as, you know, carrying, you know, the day. And we can see it from the uh, polls here. Yeah. Uh, even the, uh, the, 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 the Labour Party, Party candidate, candidate the himself, high, yes, even that's scored 5,000, you know, yeah, that's yeah. where he scored the highest figure of votes. And that's where Oredo. he's from as well. Oh, oh, oh that's where he's from. So, uh, the... 
performance of uh, Governor Godwin Obaseki, the, Governor Obaseki's uh, candidate and party cannot be divorced from his performance, the local sentiments, the political gladiators that he allowed to aggregate against him. So, uh, and again, for the uh, turnout, the rain, the violence, uh, the fear of violence, and other local sentiments affected the, the voting pattern for the PDP. But, but, but Libros, let's face it. Governor Basaki was not the one on the ballot on election day. <laughs> so so what, what exactly uh, was uh, the problem? In, the, in this election, Oshomole and Obaseki were on the ballot by proxy. Uh, everybody, the, both, the people knew. Um, the, you have a lot of uh, you had a lot of sentiment. You know the Labour Party had consistently also said a vote for a, a, for APC is a continuation of Oshomole the way he, he went about the campaign, and a vote for uh, 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 Aswe is a vote for Obaseki the way he went about the campaign. Yeah. Even declaring that the election was a do or die, you saw him in INEC office as if he was a candidate on the ballot. Mm. So the way he he spearheaded the campaign. You know, so everybody knew that these two candidates, it was an ego team for them. It was a prosy fight. And if you look at the, the figures, like Nessie had said, and I said earlier, what the both parties uh, just simply did was, look, let's match one another blow for blow, money for money, fight for fight, man marking. We know because you have the huge population here. You have the elites largely domiciled in this place. Yes. You have also the non-indigenous. Yes. You know, a lot of them trading in Benin, mm. also in these places, who also are interested in the election. Then you have a lot of people from Edo North and Edo Centra, specifically, yeah. that resides in Edo South. So, and then you also have the political gladiators. Uh, the two running mates for the two major candidates also are from... Mm, that the, local government. One is from Ovia, the other government one is from um, yeah. Ikbobaoka. So the PDP candidate is from Ikbobaoka. The um, uh, the APC for the, for the APC, I think the APC is from uh, of via northeast or so, mm -hmm. and that's the same place where um, uh, the Ibenedios are from. And he's a sitting house of rep member from that area. They call him Mr. Project in those areas. So certainly the fight was not going to be easy for all of the both of the candidates in these places. You have, uh, like I said, uh, Osage Zeyamu from Orion, even though he's not really domiciled. And therefore, Oredo, Oredo, the other factor, even though in the Obas Palace, okay. mm. PDP clearly won yeah. in the Obas Palace. It's just like what happened in Lagos, where the Lagos, the APC lost Lagos, but they won the national election. So I, I don't, I, a lot of people said, oh, look, even though People were playing the Oba, Oba script, mm. but the chiefs in the palace voted for PDP. But that factor that Obaseki was fighting the Oba, the uh, PDP candidates came to, uh, PDP governors came to campaign. He didn't take them to the palace. He took them rather to Ibenedio's uh, house. All of these were sentiment that also played out in, in the entire Oredo. Some persons abstained that they don't want to be interested because... Yeah. You didn't have somebody from the south on the you don't have somebody from the south on the ballot and so some of them have stayed and then i also want to quickly say um these our electoral numbers i think we need to really sit down and look at the, our population how many are we really and then this mode of having to travel down to participate in elections some people recite you know in abuja the lagos and you know they just sit down in their house they have pvcs but they can't go back home because of insecurity. So all of those would also contribute to why we always have every election, not just this one, every mm. election in Nigeria, total number of actual voters is usually, we have never had up to 50%. Yeah. That, 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 that no we've, doubt at all. We never do we've so, so Richard, you, you, you look at this, uh, uh, the total number, the subtotal there. Look, yes. look at um, uh, the, the outcome of uh, the election in Edo South. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the PDP won it, but then you look at the Slightly margin of victory. Um, less than 3,000. Negligible. You know, for a sitting governor from here, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be, this is poor. It's a poor performance from him. So he really did not help his candidate. The candidate is selling. And so uh, that, that's, a, that's a major factor. And don't also forget that uh, they've kept faith with him, like, like, like I said. When... They call, the people that collected their PVCs, PVC. if you look at the numbers, still huge number. 
Now, from state to state, even at national level, three categories of people that vote. Those who want to sell votes, the traders, vote traders, <laughs> <laughs> and then political party faithfuls. <laughs> They will mm. not collect money at that venue on that day. Mm. Their own reward has been coming, so they have to reward the... And then, few people that are available. Mm. The real huge number that we expect for our democracy, for whoever we win election, they continue, they continue to stay away from our election. As a result of security, some people don't feel safe going to polling units to vote. They stay away. And then the, the, the politicians, they get desperate. Governor Baseke is one. He was so desperate. His language, you know, utterances he made. And then going, he showed that he had to even go to INEX uh, Coalition Center where he was worked out. So the desperation, you could see it. Everybody could see it. So if you have been doing even your own assessments, you are, you, are, you are assessing yourself. You are assessing your performance as you go on. You would have known how the election will pan out. Pan out. If you have done well, you will know. If you have done badly, you will also know. So every election, nationally, at the state level, majority of our voters, they continue to stay away because of loss of confidence. So that confidence, liberals talk about sitting down to look at the population. Yes. You could say 25%, 10% staying away, but a situation whereby you have 75% staying away from voting. Too bad. It is bad. So it is the politicians that will sit down and correct it because their conduct, their performance must give confidence to neutrals to say, I want to go and vote. I'm impressed with what I see and it's, in my state, yes, in my Yes, exactly, locality. because performance is really key. It, it will draw people. Yeah. One of the things, for instance, let's cite Lagos' example. No governor has ever, you know, attracted the number of votes that Governor Fashola got in 2011. It is a second term. second term. When he yeah. ran for second mm. term. About 1.5 million people. Why did they go all out? To vote for Governor Fashola, not even Governor Tinubu had that, mm. that number. Because of what they saw so on, ground. on ground, what the man was doing. So everybody was saying that we have to reward, reward him. him. The man has done well. So that is what we tell politicians. When you perform, people are not stupid. They could see it. When you make road, you do road, people will drive on it, they walk on it, they see what you are doing. They see their schools. For instance, I met some people at a conference three weeks to this election. election. They came from Edo. What they said was, I, I pushed the issue of grammar, that there are candidates, that the uh, <laughs> senator Pebolo, that he, 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 you know, he won't come that to the not media. He's not, uh, uh, he doesn't talk, he doesn't do this and that. They said, say that grammar will go chop. When they talk about the schools, these are teachers, these are lecturers that go to assignments. School, primary school, secondary schools, they go for invigilation, they work for different uh, organizations in schools. So they decide no way. They told me at that conference that, it, that Monday of Pueblo would defeat uh, Asue Godalo. I said, ah, well, you live there, you should know. They gave, they gave instances. So the man performed so badly and that is the result we are seeing yes votes were traded votes were bought were sold mm. however it is in our election all the states they usually sell votes they usually buy votes what right. we tell what we tell politicians is that when you are in power perform, perform. so that you can attract new trust party faithfuls are there for you they will vote for you but they are negligible then how much can you spend to buy votes? Everybody. You can't buy everybody. So those money can buy, they are also few in number. Attract, where you have votes is the your new trust that will be attracted by your performance Fun. and public conduct. And in this and case, that is what is lacking. That's, that's what is lacking. But, so let's very quickly run through uh, the number of local government areas now won by... Uh, the APC and, and the, uh, the PDP. Libros, you have that slide before you. 
uh, local government won by the APC, 11 of them altogether. I have heard in some places where uh, some people were suggesting that how is it that um, the APC uh, would win this election uh, without winning, uh, winning just one senatorial district? Uh, Libros, perhaps you want to speak to that. I, 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 I don't think uh, those people um, looked at the numbers. If they look at the number, then they won't be talking about uh, senatorial uh, uh, district. district. Mm -hmm. Because... Um, Elections are not won by the senatorial district, they are won by local government. Yeah. So what's the total number of local government? And then like we did, you look at the senatorial district itself, what was the margin in those senatorial districts? District. Put together, the margin with which uh, the PDP to, together won the two senatorial districts they won, one about um, 3,000, the other one about 6,000. Mm. So if you put them together, you have just a negligible number of about 8,000 plus or 9,000 maximum. Mm. Then you now take it to where the APC won. The APC won with almost 70 something thousand, thousand votes, votes. Yeah. in the area where they won. Mm. So if you don't look, if you are looking at it from, you'll be biased if you are looking at it from <laughs> just from the uh, senatorial district without looking at it from local government to local government. I would have been surprised if you say PDP won 13 local government and then um, yet you know, didn't win the election. election. And then you now look at where is the population, you know, the number of mm. registered voters in this area. Because you can have a local government, for example, you can have a local government that have, let's say, we are just assuming now, mm. you have a local government, one local government has a population of 100,000, where you have three local governments put together mm. who have a population of, of 5,000. There is no way, just like in Benue State, there is no way... You are going to say that the man who came from the local government with 100,000 will always win the election. So yeah. it's only a senatorial district. And then quickly, uh, Richard, what Richard said just now about the, I also had that cons those concern hmm. during the election. And then somebody called me one day and said, it is educated people like you that will make somebody you think is an illiterate win an election. He said, all of you that speak English, you know, Baseki speaks good English. It's a, an investment banker. He said, what did we benefit from his grammar and all of those? He said, so when you have people that speak English and then they steal what they don't need, that is an encouragement to those others who you think, you know, do not, are not educated to say, look, we can do it. And then the people at some point will now begin to say, well, if those of you that are educated have failed us, let yes. us try the uneducated. <laughs> and that, that's basically what's playing out. So I, uh, sorry, quickly, and I think those of us who are educated should begin to sit up and truly show the light. Mm. And, the, and again, DG, uh, the issue about uh, senatorial zones, I think it is important for us to educate our viewers that elections is won by percentage of votes by two-thirds of the state's local governments. Yes. Yeah. Like, for example, if I score maybe 100, 100,000 in three local governments, and I can, I can garner 25% in two-thirds of the local, local governments, government. I'm, uh, yeah, so long as I have the majority votes, yes, I'm, I'm the winner. Win. I don't need to win everywhere. Yes. I must just garner 25 Concentrate on your area, area yes. where the numbers are. Where, where the, the numbers, numbers yes, are. that's it. So people, the elections is not measured by the senatorial zones. Hmm. It's by election, by local government. Hmm. Once you can garner two thirds in the and, local and, government. And, and Nelson, to add to this, if you have, for example, you have, um, um, let's say, seven local government in... in um, um, uh, uh, let you have three senatorial zone now, zones, and then yeah. you have uh, eighteen local government in all. Let's say um, six 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 per, six 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 per zone, yes. and then you leave an entire zone to your opponent to clear out an entire zone to for your opponent to clear out the six local government mm -hmm. there, and then they now come to the other two two to share local government with you and meet twenty five percent. If, no, even the one you are going to win, they take 25%, and then they take four from you in one a, a local government. They take two from you here, and then take three from you there. What are you expecting? You know, so what, you, what would the PDP ought to have done would have been the same thing that the APC do. No give anybody chance. You know, mark, the way they are going to mark you in the south and central, also mark them mark in, in the, the north. north yeah. The, uh, what do you call it, Marvelous, uh, what's his name, that uh, uh, Baseki brought as a uh, uh, running mate. Mm. He was a candidate for the House of Rep in, in the election for Labour. Mm. And they didn't go far. You had people like That's Pascal... As, as deputy, as deputy yes. right? Yeah, you had people like Pascal Bome, who had been in a, 
PDP in Esako. And he was the person that was supposed to be nominated as, as that uh, deputy. deputy. He would have been able to give people like Shaibu a run for their money. But unfortunately, when he didn't get it, and uh, traditionally, people around him will say, look at you, you want to go and die for people who are never compensated. <laughs> so, this, this, so you, look at the, you look at all of those numbers. And I asked, I said, how do you think, when somebody said in Akokwedo that Marvelous was going to beat APC in Akokwedo, and I said, how do you think that Akpatasi and Co., Marvelous would defeat them there. And, had... and, and possibly that's what the governor had in mind when he chose Marvelous to be his deputy after uh, Philip Schreiber was impeached initially. Yeah, because what he had in mind was the fact that Akuku Edo, everything, or most of the federal appointment coming to uh, Edo North goes to Esako because Oshomole is from there. Mm. The minister for Niger Delta also is from Esako West. So, and that uh, the uh, deputy governor is from Esako West, Oshomole from Esako West. So, giving Akuku Edo that slot will, you, you know, make a kukwedo, because he also has a large number, mm. be sympathetic to him. But the time was too short, mm. and what was the peck of office that will, you know... And then, mind you, his former chief of staff is also from a kukwedo, mm. the one he harassed at Taiwa, really, mm. the one he harassed when he, the, boy, the poor boy said he was no longer interested in being chief of staff. And so that one also had been given a federal appointment by the APC. So these people were going to come back home to slog it yeah, out to they, ensure they that forces. they maintain the hold, yeah. to join forces. So these were some of the things that work, work, work against him in that area. You left an entire senatorial zone for your opponent to run riot with. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, we, we, we have to end this discussion. But uh, very quickly before we end it, I, I want us to speak on uh, some of the allegations that have been raised. Nelson, you observed that election. The yeah. PDP uh, has come out to say it was heavily rigged against them. Uh, there have been allegations that... Um, what was uh, put out on the IRF is, is not in consonance with what um, uh, uh, does not tally with what um, what was read or what was recorded by INEC and all of that. Um, this case is definitely going to go to court. Um, just uh, you, you want to speak on that, Nelson, because you observed that election. Well, the, the right to disagree and come up with uh, all sorts of allegations is, is permissible under public space. But you and I know for free that in law, whatever allegations you are coming up with must be backed with, with verifiable facts. So if you have alleged that what is on the IREV, don't forget the Presidential Election Tribunal as well as the Supreme Court mm -hmm. has told us repeatedly that the IREV is a viewing center, is not a collation center. And there are procedures for collating results of which party agents as well as security agents have copies. So if you have copies of those results, that differs from what INEC declared, then you should be ready to present it in court, you know, to slug out your case. Okay, Other and, than that, and, and, and did you quickly... And that's true, the agents uh, would have copies, yeah. Qu sure. Quickly, um, you know, um, I have heard of those allegations also, and uh, which are very grave. Because ordinarily, even though the Supreme Court had heard that the IREV is a view importer, but the INEC rule is that in collation, once you're collating manually, you must first and foremost authenticate what you have manually. Manually to ensure that the figure tallies with the figure that is uploaded on the IREV. So in failure to do that is, is also fatal and detrimental. Mm. And in areas where votes, the total number of accredited votes is less than the total number of actual voters, usually uh, uh, vote ought to be cancelled in those mm. areas. Mm. But the problem, the challenge, I must also speak to the challenge. The challenge at the tribunal is that the, the primary, uh, uh, the card readers, sorry, the beav beavers, beavers now, now yeah which we used to call card readers, mm -hmm. the, because of the presumption of regularity in favor of INEC, pre, favor, pre, presumption of correctness, that once election results are, are, are announced, they are presumed correct. So the card reader, the beavers that will be examined to prove this irregularity are in possession of INEC. INEC. And so you will need 21 days within which to examine all of these uh, beavers. How well you are able to examine them also will strengthen your case. If you are able to now get a consultant like uh, my brother here, to look at the okay, figures uh, and, and <laughs> like my brother Richard, to look at the figures and place them side by side with the figures coming from IREF, then you, you go far. Otherwise, proving election irregularity. No, uh, Liberals, I disagree. It's a, it's I disagree with you. Based on, on the basis of the fact that the number of accredited voters on the IREF has a time, time stamp such that, we, and the IREF is only for results at the polling stations. And as a political party, you are expected to have 
your party agents at all police stations. So you are expected to have your results. It is for you to now gather your party agents' results at the police stations to collate whatever is done at the uh, whatever your oh, hold on uh, what your party agent don't forget parties have their agents at the ward collation center yes as well as the local government collation center yes. so if the results you have from the because a number of polling units make up a ward yes so if your results that you have stamped uh counter signed by an uh, officer as well as the security agents who also yes. have a copy if your results tallies with them then you are good, you have enough what, evidence. What? But if you are making your allegations without substantiating it, because you know in this crime, all our parties do it. When they lose the election, I have been, no party Nessin, has ever Nessin, come out to admit losing an election I am fairly. Saying, what I, I think you're saying, saying the same thing. I what I am saying is normally during coalition, yes. the essence of uploading is to to for transparency. For transparency. Mm. The, so the during uploading, coalition, the people doing coalition, they are not. They are not looking at the IREV. No, what they are, are looking at the manual papers. What, what, the that's, that's, that's what I'm telling you. Yeah, but the rule, the rule, INEC rule says when you are collating, yeah. when you look at the manual paper, yeah. paper, authenticate what is on the manual paper with what has been uploaded. But the reality, how how realizable that is, mm. is a different ball game altogether. Because when you are collating, IREV is not with you. With you. How do you now, how, at what point will you now go to IREV? To and say, okay, let me go and rule, look, what was put there. IREV is somewhere. Those people that are authenticated, by virtue of, uh, I think, uh, Rule 98 of the INEC law, uh, laws, you, you will, in the absence of the uh, collation, INEC collation sheet, they will have recourse to the uh, resource sheet uh, handed over to the agent. Mm. In the absence of that of the agent, they will have recourse to the one handed over to the police. Police, yeah. Nowhere was IREV mentioned. But they said you must authenticate with what has been uploaded. But when what is uploaded is not before you, how do you authenticate? And also, and, and also, and also uh, Libros, don't also forget that the, Sup the Supreme Court has made it clear that where there is a conflict between the position of INEC rules and regulations and the provisions of the electorate. No, so, no. no the, because if you are talking about INEC rules and regulations, it's subservient no, to the it, electoral it, act. It is the electoral act that say you authenticate. Okay. Uh, authenticate. So, All right. It, uh, by law, can also pass uh, the, the, the statute. Uh, we, we just have to wait. The, it's no, my no, colleague at the bar. No, no. There's no <laughs> doubt at all. This is going to go. This is going to go before the tribunal. Absolutely. And we'll definitely get to uh, the Supreme Court. But Richard, finally, just before we go. Very quickly, I wanted to say something on uh, the performance of the Labour Party. Not the kind of performance and anyone ever expected. Um, <laughs> Olumide Akwata performed very poorly, I must Abyss, say the truth. Abyssmally. For just less than 23,000 votes. Abyssmally. Student Union election will, will even <laughs> attract more votes. So, uh, it, its performance was woeful. Uh, yes, on TV... You can hear Fantastic. everybody. Everybody can relate with the song uh, Uludi and all that. However, campaign is different from, and that has been established in many scientific journals that yes, mass media. And, and and very quickly now, I, I remember the candidate just before the election was on TV and yes, was making reference to, to a poll organized by, by an individual, a, a, a journalist. So that is self deception. He knew, or he should know. That he got 70% in the we, poll. We should expect him that he will have a campaign council. He will have research and documentation units that will do all that for him. For you to come out and say <laughs> a poll on Twitter conducted by a journalist says you will win by 70%. And on that, you are... Bugain on TV is a <laughs> self deception that he, 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 he engaged in, and uh, I think he has seen it now. Yes, he has made allegation of his post election assessment mm. that ah, that it's, it about, was against it's, him. About, uh, it's about the election buying and voter buying. I even if it is not on buy and selling basis, can you win? Can you win actual votes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, 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 I agree with Richard that uh, Olumide, um, yes, to a very large extent, you say, yes, the election was highly monetized. There were 
vote buying, selling, trading, vote yes. trading. But then another thing, like um, I did, I did an analysis at the beginning after Olumide won the Primary. uh, primaries. Uh, but I think it took some time off, and I said, Olu, Oludi, this is not the time to rest. Uh, the, 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 the time to work, considering the fact that the Labour Party do not re, does not really have structures. They don't have men on ground who are known. Who had but they won the presidential large. election in that state. That's that's the presidential election in a, the presidential election was a different ball game altogether. A lot of people that participated in that election, do you know, didn't participate in this one because the kind of the kind of um, followership that Peter Obi has, Olumide does not have it. And then also coupled with the fact that when the state election, the stakeholders in the state are more interested than the presidential election. They are heavily interested. They heavily invest in it. And another thing, his party was highly polarized. The party at the state level did not support him. The party structure at the national level also had issues with him. So all of this played to, out. To win election, let me support you. To win election, it is not a one-off. It's not a month to election. Mm. What I, I feel that it was after Labour Party won in Edo. That was when Ulumide now decided to run for this governorship race. It was to be a governor is an eight year, ten year plan that you will have. That people will now come to trust you that okay, he has been with us, we know him. When they mention his name, they say we know him. It is not what you do because your your party was able to pull off some some magic. In the general election, and there's, there's no question that he was he was actually banking on that. Well, that. That is what even motivated him to say, "I can also do this. This is this will work for and, me." And the, the greatest <laughs> opposition he faced from the blast of his whistle, the whistle was from his own political party. Nelson, I'll, I'll let you have the final word. Well, my final talk on this uh, Labour Party's performance is that, uh, except it's, if we want to it's, delude ourselves, it's, it's really it's it's except it's if we want to delude ourselves. Uh, that uh, going through a new state, you know definitely the Labour Party had no structure. There was no sign of the Labour Party anywhere other than maybe in Olumide, Akwata's bedroom. <laughs> no, be be because uh, now, now the, the, the point is, uh, some people had predicted before the election that in Edo South, especially already local government area, that Olumide was going to be a spoiler. But, but, no, no impact thing, at all. Another thing, no no another thing the, the sentiment also that worked against him was the fact that he was from the south. Yes, Obaseki is that's from the, the local south. Sentiment. And so the local sentiment was like it is the turn of, of the Esa. Apart, apart from Abu Sali, apart from Abu Sali, and then a brief stint of Professor Sarimel Sumbo, who had problem with his godfather and any, the Esan people felt you know, short change in, in the scheme of uh, governance Political in Edo. So it authority. was like uh, ESA agenda, yes. which was why also in 2020, the entire ESA, uh, that's the Edo Central, supported Obaseki that, okay, if they support the APC candidate, that will mean eight years having to wait for eight years. Mm -hmm. But at Obaseki, will just be four years. So it was a conclusive thing that all the political parties were going to give their ticket to somebody. And that explains uh, why the APC mm -hmm. and the PDP gubernatorial candidates yes, were from, were from Edo, Central. Edo Central. It was the local sentiment. You know, I, I just find it difficult to understand how one can spend so much money, so much, and they'll come probably up with running into billions of naira and come up with just less than 23,000 votes. It, it's just... Before you spend that huge amount of money on uncertainties, why won't you just do an assessment of your image, of your public image, but of your election <laughs> image, and whether you know are where you, whether you are electable or not. DG, you know Nigerians, the moment you, you, <laughs> see, you, you decide to run, from that day, we call you distinguished. Exactly. Your Excellency. No, no, honorable. Honorable. Your Excellency, sir. And, so, and, the end, and on that day, you. on the day of election, some of those agents will go for money. They will vote for another party. For These sure. are people that will be calling you His Excellency. So Nigerians know how to deceive. It's, it's, it's so unfortunate. I want to thank you very much for coming on the program. Thank you for your deep uh, analyses and insights there. Libro Soshoma, lawyer and political pleasure. affairs analyst, thank you very much for your time. And Nelson Ekujimi, political thank affairs analyst and also observer to the last uh, governorship election in Edo yeah. State. And Richard Adeinka, uh, the data man, thank, thank you very much for coming on the thank program. You for me. Well, that's how much we can take on the program this week. We thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.